stunned when we get to heaven and discover that there are a lot of people there that we didn't expect to be there. And maybe not a few that we expected to be there who didn't make it. <laughs> uh, because if you take the 25th chapter of Matthew seriously, where we begin in verse 33, it says, well, when you get to the kingdom of God, the, the question that the great interocular uh, 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 ask you is it, it's going to be not what do you believe, but have you fed the hungry? Have you given water to the thirsty? Have you taken in the stranger in the land? Have you visited the prisoner? Have you gone to the hospital to visit those who are ill? Have you put your arms around all those who are loveless and outside the boundaries of your tent? And uh, some will answer, uh, yes, we did that. And uh, God will say, come into the kingdom prepared for you since the beginning uh, because you're one of mine. And others will say, no, we didn't do that. And they'll say, well, depart from me because I never knew you. You were not of mine. And I think that uh, the great problem with Southern evangelicalism is that we put all of our, our, our wager on belief. And there are not any Christians in the world who are better at believing than Southern Christians. But we have not put much of our wager on ethics. And where we have wagered on ethics, it's always been personal ethics. I don't fornicate, I don't commit adultery, I don't gamble, I don't drink. Well, that's not the standard of the 25th chapter of Matthew. The standard in the 25th chapter of Matthew is, are your ethics relationship kind of ethics that do not hurt people? And do you reach out and help them up and help take care of them? And so, unless the Southern Church can reconnect belief and ethics. I don't see much future for the Southern Church and the best evidence of this is that Southern Baptists are losing between 80 and 90 percent of their 18 year olds and they don't come back. But all churches are losing between 75 and 90 percent of their college students because they can't deal honestly with human sexuality. They can't deal with human conflicts that divide communities. They are polarized around belief and doctrine, and they think that's what people come to the church for. No, people come to the church for wholeness and for forgiveness and for grace and for serenity and for peace. They don't come to argue over homosexuality, and certainly 18-year-olds don't come for that. So we have moved into the era where 18 to 35-year-olds are actually polling data, the least institutionally religious of any generation ever polled in America and where the most rapid growing sector of religious belief in our culture is disbelief. They either, they either don't believe God exists at all or it's just irrelevant to them. That's the fastest growing demographic in America. And I would argue it's not because, uh, it's not because Darwinism won, it's not because atheism or agnosticism won, it is because the church made it itself so repulsive to so many people by judgment. And I would argue that your boss judges you, your professor judges you, your spouse judges you, your parents or your children judge you. People don't need to come to the church to be judged. Everywhere they go, they're judged. Uh, what they need to come to the church to find is forgiveness and grace and mercy and, and reconciliation. And if they can't find that, uh, they're not coming. And so I expect, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting that in my study of American religion in the world context, America is the only religious industrialized nation in the world left. The only one. It's, all, it's the only one where even close to a majority of people attend church or believe in God. So is the anomaly everybody else in the world, every other industrialized nation, or are we just the tail end of an erosion that began 100 years ago, 150 years ago, and is just now culminating with a collapse of American institutional religion. I think you could make a very good case for the latter based on the most polling, recent polling data from Pew and Gallup. Uh, what I see is just a cascading collapse of American institutional Christianity, probably to be followed by the re-Christianizing of the industrial world from Africa or from Asia, where they're sending missionaries to us to convert us from materialism and greed, which is actually, when you think about it, pretty close to our national religion. 
Uh, I think if we had a trinity in America and we were honest, it would be hedonism, narcissism, and materialism. It would not be God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs>